Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule in joining our webinar today. Webinar title is Phenotypic Flow Cytometric Analysis of Regulated Cell Death. 124 subpopulations identified explain why flow is better than Western blood. My name is Andy Wong, a senior marketing manager in ASEA Biosciences, now a part of Agilent. It is my pleasure to host our webinar today. Cell death is one of the most fundamental biological processes. Different methods and technologies can be used for studying cell death. Western blot is a commonly used one, but it has several limitations compared to flow cytometry, such as the needs for higher cell numbers, average information of all cells, lower multiparametric capability. On the other hand, flow cytometry has the benefits of minimal sample quantity, single cell, multi-parametric, highly sensitive, and quantitative for a in-depth, automated, and high-throughput cell analysis for all subpopulations. In a recent paper published in Apoptosis Journal by Dr. Gary Warren and his co-workers, flow cytometry is utilized for in-depth study of regulated cell death. To overcome the limitation in the usage of lysed cell population with Western plot analysis. Dr. Gary Worms is currently the flow core facility lab manager in Blazer Institute, Queen Mary University of London. Dr. Gary Worms and his co workers have shown that intracellular antigen flow cytometric analysis of WIP3, capsis 3, and cell variability dye allow to the determination of levels of apoptosis, necroptosis and the RIP1-dependent apoptosis in a single GERCAT cell population. The addition of more intracellular markers allows the determination of the incident of pathanatose, DNA damage response, S2AX, hyperactivation of PARP, autophagy, and ER stress. That's allowing the identification of 124 subpopulations both within live and dead cell populations. In this webinar, Dr. Gary Warns will share with you and discuss this new approach to regulated cell death. And this new approach should be a great advance to understanding the mechanisms of drugs and their effects upon regulated cell death populations. This study and the related experimental aspects will be discussed in details and tips and tricks will be shared as well. Additionally, you will hear his experience with ASEA Novosite brand flow cytometers. Currently available in market, there are one to three laser Novosite systems, as well as the four laser up to 24 color, newest addition to the family, Novosite Quantium, capable of flow cytometry automation as well. During the webinar, we welcome you to send in questions at any time using the questions menu inside the GoToWebinar control panel. We will answer them at the end of the webinar. If your question is not answered due to time limitation, you will receive our answers in a follow-up email. Also, the webinar will be recorded and made available afterwards. Without further ado, let me welcome our speaker today, Dr. Gary Warns, and he will give you this educational webinar as well as his experience and background information. Thank you. Hello, welcome to the SEA webinar. My name is Dr. Gary Warns. I will be talking today about regulated cell death and how this can be measured flow cytometrically. We can identify up to 124 populations. We'll discuss why this is better than Western blot. Just to introduce myself further, I started working in flow cytometry in 1986 at St. Mary's Hospital, counting CD4 cells on an EPIX-5 cell sorter. I then set up my own laboratory at St. Thomas's Hospital using one of the first BD fax scans. I then went on to uh, do a PhD looking at the new response in hemophilia, where I developed the antigen quantification national assay using quantum simply cellular beads to quantitate the immune response on CD4 cells measuring CD69 and 25. 
I also at that time helped publish the International Protocol for Estimating Bacterial Cell Death by Procytometry on the same fax scan. I then did a postdoc in the US where I, look, I developed another assay looking at the innate immune response, quantifying in a similar manner as in my PhD, looking at monocyte tissue factor in sepsis, as well as post stimulating molecules on the monocytes and lymphocytes and platelet P selectin. I then moved back to the UK where I became the manager of the Imaging and Forcytometry Unit, the MRC. Uh, in 2006, in 2000, in 2006, I moved to Cancer Research UK, to the Forcytometry facility there. And then from then to, to date, I'm, I now work at the Blizzard Institute at Queen Mary University. I've since published uh, the International Protocol of Estimating Autophagy by Forcytometry in 2014, and also published about 10 papers looking at cell a regulated cell death by cytometry. I, for this work, I used a ACA Norbicide 3000. You can see a layout of the three laser instrument here. We can do 13 colors. Some of the PMTs detect more than one color. For example, it has a small footprint and it has uh, the three lasers that measure area and height parameters, as well as mean, median, and geometric means, and CV and standard deviations of the fluorescence. This is a list of some of the fluorophores you can measure. You can see from the billion violet list it will do six billion violet, seven eleven is missing. But the uh, voltages are preset as it has seven log decades with bi exponential functions on the scales. It also has within Norvex best software, cell cycle platform and proliferation platform, you can even measure sub G1 in the cell cycle analysis plot. Um, it also has an automatic sampler called the Nova sampler, which will do the 5 mil fractal tubes as well as any tissue culture plate, except for six well plates. It is syringe driven, so and it will do acquisitions in 100 microliter aliquots. And from this, you can get absolute counts without using um, any other reagents, and it will look, look at 35,000 events per second. Uh, the Nova Express software also has automated and or manual compensation. You can paste your results into Excel and it will do heat map functions as well. And this is an image of my machine on an ordinary lab bench. And just to mention, uh, the Novosite uh, new machine is called the Quantian. It has the yellow green laser, so it will measure 25 colors. Just to move to regulated cell death, um, which we'll be talking about today, you can see that in this diagram, accidental cell death is outside it. And uh, the forms of cells we'll be talking about today is accidental, uh, regulated cell death, whereas programmed cell death now is the hemostatic apoptosis, and not apoptosis and necro programmed necrosis, for example. And there is no room for senescence or AR stress within this uh, reclassification. Now there is, seems to be, for some reason, RIP1 dependent apoptosis is not included. Just to move to some of the mechanisms and forms of cell death. Um, classically, it, you know, phosphatometry is used to measure apoptosis. Um, and we can measure phosphatidylserine flipping with an X and 5 assay, and this can be plexed with mitochondrial function probes as well as caspase 3 activated substrates, for example. As I mentioned, you can use LC3B, which is a biological marker for autophagy in phosphatometry using antibody, although you can um, obviously label this with GFP. Um, in some cells types. Um, we won't be discussing oncosis, but um, in this form of cell death, mitochondrial dysfunction occurs, and I published a paper in Cytometry A in 2011. Uh, we won't be covering pyroptosis today. Gas dermin is the required uh, way it's measured on by Western blot, for example. Uh, just to go into a bit more detail about uh, apoptosis, so CNF alpha induces a lot of different types of apoptosis, I guess, depending on the cell type. And classic apoptosis is called uh, complex 2A, and this activates caspase 3 ultimately uh, to, to get apoptosis. The other form is um, RIP1 dependent uh, apoptosis. So you've got RIP1 and RIP3 involved here, uh, as well as caspase 3 activation. And this is com called complex 2B. Complex 2C is the necrosome. Uh, so-called, um, which involves the phosphorylation of RIP1 and uh, 
phosphorylation of RIP3 and regulation of that, and this then goes on to phosphorylate kinase MLKL, which it forms a pore in the plasma membrane. And this is taken from the paper by Stockwell. Um, so this is the basis of version one of my assay using a live cell fixable dye with RIP3 PE antibody and Caspase 3 brilliant violet antibodies. And from this we get in the RIP3 positive only cells we have necroptosis, it's regulated and um, classic apoptosis is brilliant uh, Caspase 3 only positive where the RIP1 dependent apoptosis is double positive. And so you can actually get not just these three populations uh, in, in the cell sample, you can obviously detect these in the live and dead, so you get six populations plus the negative, so altogether eight, where in, uh, you'd have to do three Western blots to detect all of this uh, normally, I think. Um, so just going to program necrosis um, and other forms of necrosis, we've got the classic, as I mentioned, necroptosis, and DNA damage involves, in this case, I measured it, measured by looking at H2X for regulation, and parthenatos is when you get DNA damage through UV radiation or ROS, and the DNA damage results in part being upregulated, which is the definition of parthenatos. Um, so the biological markers of cell death is uh, active caspase 3, and one of these cells are also RIP3 negative, and this is classic apoptosis, where the RIP1 dependent apoptosis is double positive for the two markers. And Necroptosis is the phosphorylation of RIP3 or, or, and RIP1, but you also get upregulation of RIP3, which is more easily measurable by prosatomic recurrently. So these are also caspase 3 negative events. Parthenatos is measured by PARP, DNA damage hits to X. If you were measuring parthenatos, you'd use gasmoderm or upregulation of caspase 1. And autophagy can be upregulated by L. Uh, measured by regulated LC3B or control levels. Accidental cell death, could, you could use a mitochondrial probe to do, measure this, which I've done in the past. ER stress, we're measuring this in this study by PERC. You can measure it by measuring the levels of misfold of proteins, and reticular phagy is the ER of the, I mean, the phagy of the endoplasmic reticulum, which can be measured by using ER tracker probes. I'll be using jerkats as a cell model. And these are all usually measured by having I mean, individual samples for each one by Western blot or fluorescent microscopy um, standardly. Um, so we'll just see the advantage of this assay measuring all of these, most of these are things I mentioned above. Uh, so how would you induce those forms of cell death? I've used a topicide induced apoptosis. Can you store a or UV irradiation? Necroptosis is induced by TNF alpha. I found a drug that's called chaconin, and I've used that. I've measured necroptosis after 24 hours. And this also induces RIP1 dependent apoptosis, as we'll see. Parthenatos can be induced by UV radiation as well as DNA damage. Pyrophotosis can be induced by LPS if you have the right cell type or carbon nanoparticles, and there are numerous groups who can do this with uh, to induce pyrophotosis. Autophagy, if you want to induce the complete autophagic flux, you have to use rapamycin. I've used chloroquine as this uh, blocks, initiates uh, autophagy, but then blocks it at the lysosomal fusion step, and hence you get a buildup of signal of the LC3B, which makes it more measurable. ER stress can be reduced by perhaps this R gene. Accidental so that can reduce one sort of thing, sodium azide, or heating 42 degrees. I will be looking at how we can modulate the response to chaconin and uh, Chloroquine by blocking the C VAD, block apoptosis, and necrostatin will block uh, RIP1 phosphorylation of kinase activity. And so the methodology on the instrument, we load the cells after the treatment with live fixable dye. I've used zombie near infrared for 15 minutes of room temperature. You wash it off and then fix with caltag solution uh, air, which is a fixative. And this is very important that you use this one, as I, this is the only one I've tested, and this preserves the epitopes on the RIP3 that the antibody identifies, and others may not do this. Um, I've also then used in-house Triton X100 to perm the cells for 15 minutes and then add the anti-LC3B uh, antibody. I've used CST clone D11XP, a 
and then added anti rabbit 647 for 20 minutes to wash that off. And then I've added the Santa Cruz uh, antibodies perk and RIP3 to uh, look at ER stress and necrotosis. And I've also used BDs, PARP, and Caspias 3 antibody, as well as BioLegends H2X PE size 7 antibody. And we collected 200,000 events on the Nova Site 3000. And I've also taken some images using the Excito machine from Chemometic to look at the uh, to clarify that we have do have autophagy in the samples. So getting on regulated cell death, we've got the zombie caspase 3 plot. So the double negative cells are the live cells. Caspase 3 alone is early apoptosis, double positive is late apoptosis, and zombie only positive cells indicate um, necrosis or oncrosis as it should be really termed. Looking at the live cells, so we're getting on the the live on early apoptotic cells and looking at caspase 3, RIP3 plot, we see that the early apoptotic cells are caspase 3 positive but RIP3 negative. Double positives indicate RIP1 apoptosis in live cells and the uh, necroptotic cells would be RIP3 only positive. And you can see in the dead cells you get the same sort of profile, although the percentages are a little different. Talk about that later. Now, for each of those four populations in each of the live and dead cells, we can look at H2X and PARP. So, H2X only is indicating DNA damage, PARP is indicating um, parthenatos, and double positive is looking hyper at hyperactivation of PARP. So, we can do that for each of the populations, and you can see you get a similar sort of profile in the dead cells as well. So, this would give um, the total, I think, of 52 populations, instead of, instead if you did all these by Western blot, you would have to do a lot of lanes, I guess. Um, so looking at um, necroptosis or autophagy and um, apoptosis, looking at the zombie class phase three plots, just what you would get compared to untreated live cells and dead cells. Um, here we have the, the Shikoni treat cells after 24 hours, you get a lot of early apoptosis indicated by the Caspian 3 positive events. Um, and double positives indicating late apoptosis, and single positive with zombies indicating uh, necrosis or oncosis. Autophagy, you just get an increase in late apoptosis, a slight increase. When you add ZVAD to Shikoni, you get a reduction in early apoptosis and late apoptosis and an increase in necrosis. Uh, adding ZVAD with chloroquine, you stop the late apoptosis. Now, adding necrostatin 1, which stops the kinase activity of RIP1, stops um, necroptosis from happening. So you uh, get more cells doing necro necrosis and less cells doing early and late uh, apoptosis. Then moving on to looking at light, like more detailed analysis, looking at RIP3 expression during necroptosis and apoptosis. This is the resting live cells, untreated cells. And when you treat the, the live cells, so you've got just background levels of apoptosis and uh, uh, double negativity. Um, after Chaconin treated, you see you get a lot of in, uh, early apoptosis as well as double positivity indicating RIP1 dependent apoptosis. But you can see the RIP3 positive only cells are low in incidence, but the MFI of these have gone up to 50,000, where in the control it's 39,000. So that's a nearly almost a 30% increase in uh, necroptosis. If you block with CVAD, you don't change the upregulation of the RIP3, but you get an increase in incidence of the necroptotic population because the apoptosis is severely reduced by the C5. Now, if you add necrostatin 1, this regulation of RIP3 is stopped indicating that we are actually measuring necroptosis, and there's a return of apoptosis as well as RIP1 apoptosis. Now, looking at the dead cells, you can see that the profile in these is very different to the live cells. Um, and this is actually a normal profile for most uh, dead cells, no matter what the treatment. So you have to Understand when you do Western blot, if you have a lot of dead cells, you can maybe indicate just show um, late apoptosis only, and maybe not necroptosis. Um, 
as it, when you've got necroptosis, you can see there's just an increase in late apoptosis. When you block with z this is reduced. When you block with necrostatin 1, it's very similar to the rest in control. Um, looking at autophagy, the live cells, again, showing a typical resting cell profile of a lot of expression of GRIP3 and just a little bit of caspase 3. But the autophagy, you can see that the LC3B is upregulated above the control, significantly to 30%. And when you add CVAD, not much happens to the GRIP3 caspase 3 levels. But uh, when you add, when you may look at autophagy, it's increased in the live cells after CVAD treatment by when you reduce uh, autophagy by chloroquine. Looking at the dead cells, you've got um, late apoptosis happening here again, and the autophagy levels in the dead cells is not generally increased above uh, the rest in control. Whereas the autophagy with z value you get a reduction in late apoptosis, but again, you get an increase in the degree of autophagy in the dead cells above controls. And just to confirm, we are talking about autophagy here on the right, and you can see the punctate staining in red of the LC3B. And you can see punctate staining to some degree of the uh, H2X, which is, happens a lot in Jerkat cells, even when they're resting, which you can see on the left side. And the white cells will indicate that the cells are dead. So you have Caspase 3 in violet and zombie in cyan, for example. Um, so moving to uh, other forms of uh, necropsis, I suppose. Uh, it, looking at uh, live cells and looking at early apoptosis, we've got a high degree in untreated cells with parthenite or some hyperactivation part. And when you treat the cells with conin, this is not really radically changed. Where in RIP1, the apoptosis in the untreated cells, there's a high degree of DNA damage. And this is downregulated when you add the drug, and parthenite or some hyperactivation part is increased. Interestingly, in the resting cells, you have a high degree of DNA damage, and this isn't changed when you add the drug, although there's a small increase in hyperactivation of PARP and PARPNATOS. In the double negative cells in, in the live cell population, there may be double quadruple negative or um, positive for PARPNATOS only, and this is increased when you added the drug chicone for 24 hours. Looking at the dead cells and late apoptosis in uh, untreated cells, again, you get a high degree of parthenite or some hyperactivation of part. And this is increased when you add the drug, as, as is the DNA damage response. Uh, again, RIP1 apoptosis is this time showing a high degree of uh, parthenite or some hyperactivation of part. And these are part, uh, hyperactivation part was increased by the drug, and parthenite was decreased, as is DNA damage. Now, the resting cells show a high degree of everything, and as well as quadruple negativity. And the hyperactivation part in parthenatos is increased when you have the group, and the DNA damage response is decreased in the DNA in the dead cells. Looking at the double negative cells, so these are actually the oncotic or necrotic cells, if I, if I call them sometimes. And three, two thirds of these cells are dead, uh, have no marker uh, for anything. Uh, and this is increased when you. Uh, in terms of parthenite or some hyperactivation part when you're out of the drug. Looking at autophagy in a similar respect, we, when we treat the life cells, we have again the classic resting phase cells. And when we look at the autophagic cells, the level of apoptosis is decreased after chloroquine treatment. And when you add a disease, it's decreased further. Looking at H2X in part in the untreated cells, there's a high degree of DNA damage. And this, interestingly, is decreased when you have autophagy occurring, uh, there's a reduction in parthenatos as well. Um, when you added CFAD, this uh, reduction in DNA damage returns to normal levels, high levels. Um, looking at the dead cells, again, we've got a high degree of everything, and this is upregulated. Um, is that the incidence of RIP3 positive populations has increased and there's a decrease in uh, uh, late apoptosis. And likewise, when you add C value, you get a reduction in late apoptotic cells. And looking at how uh, the DNA damage in part, you get a high degree of these in, in treated cells and you get a return, an increase in the amount of DNA damage 
in the dead cells compared to untreated dead cells. And you get a reduction in parthenitos as well. And when you add C vitamin with chloroquine, uh, the DNA damage, the degree of DNA damage is reduced by this process, as well as hyperactivation of parthenitos. And these are significantly different. So we can conclude that the dead cells have a very different phenotype that of live cells compared to Western blood. Uh, so, are, are, sorry, are, are the results by Western blood affected by this? If you have a lot of dead cells, you're going to maybe get the same result. I don't know an awful lot about this, but uh, 52 populations can be detected when you're looking at necroptosis and apoptosis more. That's uh, when you've got autophagy and you have stress happening. Um, in Chaconi treated in uh, cells, the apoptosis is reduced by CVAD, and there's an increase in necrotic cells. And likewise, you get a small increase in necrotic cells by autophagy, which was inhibited by CVAD. Chaconian induced necroptosis um, was detected by the regulation of RIP3 by an increase of 30%, and this was blocked by necrostatin 1. It also got classic apoptosis and RIP1 apoptosis as well. And autophagy, uh, was, which was initiated by chloroquine, uh, was detected, and this was in increased in the live cells by CVAD blockade. Uh, Chaconian treated dead cells showed increased levels of classic apoptosis, which is reduced by the CVAD. And chloroquine treated dead cells showed less apoptosis, which decreased CVAD by CVAD further. And CVAD increased in some sort of dead autophagic cells as well. Chaconian induced uh, increased incidence of hyperactivation of part and part and not loss in live RIP1 dependent apoptotic cells as well as the necroptotic phenotypes. While the late apoptotic and dead RIP1 dependent apoptotic cells should increase hyperactivity of part or a decrease in part and not loss. In dead necroptotic and D and double negative cells should increase levels of both of these. And just to confirm that autophagy seems to reduce DNA damage when the cells are alive and resulting in more being expressed when the cells are dead. So whether work could be as I've uh, shown in the apoptosis paper, in the Journal of Apoptosis, looking we can modulate the DNA, uh, the DNA damage response, as well as parthenitis and hyperactivation part by C VAD and necrostatin 1. And C VAD reduced levels of only induce factor if it's not part by necrostatin one did not. So we you could play about by inducing autophagy uh, as a this with ER stress, it didn't stop sleep from happening. And maybe this will happen with other forms of uh, regulated cell deaths. So you can maybe highlight how autophagy protects the cell. I've also expanded my current uh, assay from version two to version three, where I've also now included uh, measurement of ROS and mitochondrial function and I'm currently working on the data at the moment. So thank you to the support of uh, ECA and allowing me to invite me for, to do this webinar. I'll take some further questions in a minute. I'd just like to show the publications that I've published in the last 10 years. Thank you very much.